All righty, and welcome to the second tutorial on hyperbolas. This time we're going to look at our second objective, to convert the equation of a hyperbola from general form to standard form. So if we can flip over to this example in our notes, we're going to look at one example and then I have one try for you to try. So this is a conic section in general form. And the way that I know that this is a hyperbola is, first of all, both quadratic terms exist and their coefficients are opposite signs, which means there is a subtraction. Now, just because the subtraction is with the x squared does not mean necessarily that this is going to be a vertical vertical hyperbola. We don't really know until we put this in standard form. Now watch out for this one because this can be one of the trickiest ones. It's very similar to the ellipses, but watch out for this negative. Okay, so the first thing is just like with ellipses, we're going to put the um, same variable terms together. So I'm going to put the 9x squared with the negative 72x. I'm not putting any blanks yet because these are not ready to go. I'm putting the y's together. So that's going to be 25y squared whoops, uh, minus 100y. And at the same time as I'm doing that, I'm just going to get rid of whatever constant is over here. Of course, I have to do the opposite operation to it. So that's going to all be equal to positive 269. Okay, great. So now let's um, start to complete the square. We cannot complete the square unless we have the leading coefficient as a 1. So I know that I'm going to be dividing out a negative 9. It doesn't disappear. It just comes right outside my quantity from each of these two terms. So obviously negative 9 divided by negative 9 makes my 1x squared. And negative 72 divided by negative 9 makes a positive 8 with my x. Now I'll put in a place for my blank. Okay, let's do that for my uh, y's as well. I need to get this leading coefficient away. It needs to be a 1. So I'm going to pull that right on outside. Since this is a positive 25, this is a positive 25 here. And then my quantity. I've got my 1y squared, which is great. And negative 100 take, uh, divided by 25 is negative 4. And I'll put a little plus blank. Over on the other side of the equation, I've got 269. But since I've got two blanks on the left side, I'm going to color code this to two blanks on the right side as well. OK, now let's complete the square. What goes in this first blank, since half of 8 is 4 and 4 squared is 16, is 16. But 16 is not what I did to this side of the equation. What I did was I put negative 9 times 16 in the, on this side of the equation. So I need to make sure that I multiply these together to get negative 144 and put that in the blank, the first time we've actually put a negative into our blank. That's just because there was a negative 9 right here. And then over here, half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Doesn't matter, half of negative 4 is negative 2. Both of those squared will be 4. But again, 4 is not what affected this side, or is not what increased by 4. I increased by 25 4s. So that's 100 that I need to counterbalance over here. Okay, so again, please make note of those uh, two numbers. Okay, so now we can factor. This, of course, is x plus 4 quantity squared, and this is y minus 2 quantity squared. And if I do some math over here, it looks like I've got 369. Take away 144 should be 225. Hey, that feels kind of good because that's a perfect square. It's not always going to happen, but... It did right here. OK. So my last thing that I need to do is get this all equal to 1. So whatever this term is, whatever this number is, just divide by that number. That's what makes it be 1. So I'm going to divide every term by that number. And now I get to decide that this is actually a vertical hyperbola. I might have guessed that from the beginning. I know that because this is going to be my positive term, and this is going to remain my negative term. Sometimes you'll get a negative number over here, and that's OK. When I divide by my negative number, if I got one right here, then these two terms would switch. It didn't happen here, so that's OK. So if you don't mind, I'm going to use my commutative 
positive property at the same time and put this positive term first. 25 goes into 225. Is that 9 times? So I've got y minus 2 quantity squared divided by 9. And then my minus sign, I'm going to put this term over here. My minus sign comes next, and I've got x plus 4 quantity squared divided by 9 goes into 225. Hey, guess what? It goes in 25 times. So those numbers kind of switch. And that's all equal to 1. So this is my standard form for this hyperbola. It took completing the square on both variables to get it. And there we go. So that's how you convert from general to standard form. I'm going to continue with this to graph it just to get practice with the graphing. My center is negative 4, comma, 2. So I'm going to go there, negative 4, comma, 2. And let's see, I've got my vertices to do. So I have to figure out my value of A. My value of A is a 3. And I know that I'm vertical. So I'm going to be counting up and down, 3, 1, 2, th one, two 3, and down, 1, 2, 3. So these are the points, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 4, negative 1. Negative 4, 5, and negative 4, 1. My focal points, or my foci, I need the value of c. And c is the square root of 9 plus 25. So that means that C is the square root of 34. So that means C is approximately, from my calculator, 5.8. So I'm going to be counting up and down 5.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.8 ish. And down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.8 ish. Let's count that. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.8. Negative 4, comma, 7.8. And negative 4, 1, 2, 3.8. Negative 4, negative 3.8. OK. And I've got my two asymptotes. I'll just label that with an A. And that's going to be the y minus 2 quantity is equal to plus or minus. I need my A divided by my B. So that's 3 divided by 5. Got to take the square roots and x plus 4. And now I can plot those. I center myself here at negative 4, 2. And then my slopes are positive 3 fifths and negative 3 fifths. So up 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From the center, down 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That'll be enough there. And then from my center, I'll do the slope of negative 3 fifths. Down 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's enough there. I'll go up and right, excuse me, and left one more. So again, I want as many dots as I can to make my asymptotes nice and straight. And then I can go ahead and plot in my curve, starting from my vertex. And this is a nice wide hyperbola. Going up that way and that way, starting here and coming this way and this way. OK, so that is ultimately the lesson right here. This tutorial is to get your general form into standard form. But I went and graphed it um, for extra practice for you. I do have one try problem. I'd like you to try putting this general form into standard form. So if you could please press pause and try putting this into standard form. And if you want to graph it as well, I'm going to do that as well. So push pause now. Thank you. So if you tried this, then hopefully you got the answer in the box. Here is our standard form. I did not put my denominator of 1. Um, that's fine if you did, so it's easier for you to see the value of a. The biggest mistake I see students making here is right here with this negative y squared. Please understand that you still have to factor out a negative 1, which obviously makes this a positive y squared, but it will change this term to a negative 4y, which of course makes the quantity 
y minus 2 quantity squared, which of course makes the center have a y coordinate of 2. That might have been the one mistake that you made if you made any mistakes. I also graphed it, so hopefully you had fun with that. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and again, we'll see you in class to practice this some more. Bye-bye.